Hello guys, Winston here. You all know by now that I'm a big aerospace nerd, and finding ways to mix rocket topics with daily life has been something of an entertaining side venture for me. After making SpaceX drone ship drink coasters earlier this year, I solicited the unofficial SpaceX Facebook group for more wacky project suggestions, using the idea of gridfin trivets as an example to seed creative suggestions. But the more I thought about it, the more I believed that gridfin trivets was actually a brilliant idea, so I decided to make a few. After consulting the internet, I fired up Fusion 360 and started up modeling an approximation of the Falcon 9's grid fins. Now, I was sort of just winging it, so if anyone has a better idea for how to model this sort of geometry, please do share in the comments section down below. But the general steps I took were as follows. Define the outer profile of the grid fin, draw the two structural beams that run all the way down from the grid fin mounts, since those are major defining features, and then extrude a bunch of repeated walls to create the grid pattern. In hindsight, I modeled that really inefficiently. I'm used to Creo, where you can't start extrusions from sketches that aren't explicitly closed. That's why I deliberately overshot the outer profile of the grid fin. But anyway, after some refinement of the model, I moved into the cam setup. I wanted to identify the absolute minimum amount of machining I could get away with, so I first tried to do pure contour cuts. I knew that there would be a plug of wood left in each of the grid fin holes that could rattle around and jam the cutter, but I wanted to see if it would actually be a problem. Especially since I see people like Frank Howarth giving work holding tabs the middle finger all the time. And just for the hell of it, I would be running the job on the Nomad. This would be the absolute worst case scenario since that spindle has much less torque than a palm router. This, somewhat expectedly, didn't go so well for two reasons. Number one, as soon as the Nomad liberated the excess stock in the middle of each grid fin cutout, the little plug of wood shifted and stalled the spindle. Not the end of the world since the end mill had just completed all the cutting it needed to do for that operation, but quite traumatic for me to observe. Number two, I screwed up during the cam process and accidentally double clicked a profile. This made Fusion 360 cut on the outside of the profile instead of the inside. I didn't realize it until it was too late. The damage had been done and I didn't feel like facing off a ton of material to salvage the piece. Now, this screwed up prototype wasn't actually a bad thing. The trivet would be my life leader for testing since I needed a sacrificial piece to confirm that my grid fin design was structurally sound. After getting some confidence that my trivet was strong enough to survive moderate abuse, I got ready to enter mass production. For future iterations, I'd start with a quarter inch end mill to pocket out a good amount of the stock inside the grid fins before coming back with an eighth inch end mill to clean up the cutouts and contour cut the outside profile. This increased my cycle time, but it also dramatically decreased my overall stress level. There were a few cases where I'd underestimated the thickness of the stock material, so I came back with a random orbit sander to get through the onion skin from the other side. Now, to finish these pieces, I wanted to stick with something simple like mineral oil. It's cheap, non-toxic, and easy enough for even a chimpanzee to maintain. Cost was a factor because the only way I could think to apply a finish was to immerse the entire grid fin in it, which meant I needed a lot of it. There's so much surface area on this piece that you'd never be able to get into all the nooks and crannies with a brush, much less an aerosolized spray. My first attempts involved trying to put the oil in a shallow vessel or even just a plastic bag and dunk the grid fins in it. Then I'd use compressed air to blow off the excess. And this process was annoying because I needed a large excess of mineral oil to submerge my piece in it. And then, because of the viscosity of the mineral oil, I couldn't dry the piece nearly as well as I'd hoped with compressed air. What I really needed was a way to attach these to a rocket and subject them to a high velocity turbulent airstream, but I had to settle for some paper towels and a couple hours of waiting. Immersing a piece in a non-curing finish like mineral oil is something that time doesn't really improve. Oil soaked into the wood will just keep wicking out until it reaches a happy equilibrium within the wood fibers, so I tried to dunk and dry these pieces as quickly as possible. At some point, it struck me that the most efficient dunk tank possible would be one that was shaped exactly like a grid fin. And as it turns out, I already had walls that were just the right shape. After repurposing my scraps by gluing them into a grid fin shaped pool and sealing the interior faces, I was a lot happier with the volume of oil needed to immerse each grid fin. And then, SpaceX upended my business model. Within a couple weeks of listing these on Etsy, SpaceX unveiled their new set of upgraded grid fins to the world. These forged titanium fins are works of art with tons of cool features. For starters, the depth of the design eliminates the need for the little dorsal protrusion on the old grid fins. Hydraulic and pneumatic pistons can't act on a plane that intersects with the axis of rotation, so the old fins had that protrusion for the deployment actuators to interface with. The new fin has such a deeply contouring profile that it doesn't need that extra rib bolted on. 
Of course, I couldn't possibly replicate that shape, but I could cut the scalloped profile of the titanium fin's underside. And of course, the new titanium fins are impervious to the heat cycling of re-entry, which meant that my flight-proven trivet finish option was rendered unnecessary. Which was okay, because I really only did that so I'd have an excuse to play with my propane torch. So, new trivets, how would I make them? The same way I made the old ones, sketch up the outer profile of the grid fin, add repeated slats with spacing adjusted to match that of the actual grid fin, build out the profile of the grid fin to account for inaccuracies discovered along the way, manually draw in unique geometric features within the grid fin pattern, and then, really tediously, start sketching out the extruded cuts to create the scallop pattern on the underside of the fins. Sharp-eyed viewers will notice that I cut out a row of openings in my grid fins. This was to create a product with a more square aspect ratio. I also designed these to conveniently fit the same size shipping envelopes that I'd been using for quite some time now. The cam strategy was basically the same as the originals. Do the majority of the material removal with a quarter inch end mill, switch to a long reach eighth inch end mill to clean up the walls, and then cut out the outer profile. But there would be two significant additions to the process. One, an adaptive clear. Two, a parallel finish with a quarter inch ball end mill. The adaptive clear removes a lot of the material in the scallop so that the finishing pass encounters less resistance and can run at a higher feed rate. Some key things to adjust for this toolpath were to change the direction offset to 45 degrees and enable a perpendicular pass. This lined up the finish passes to match the orientation of the grid fin slots for greater efficiency and finish quality. The cycle time on these was a little longer. The parallel finishing toolpath took an extra 40 minutes to run, so the added time was reflected in the cost. By now, I was a pro at mineral oil immersion baths, and I had these trivets dunked and dried in no time at all. And that wrapped up my experiment in rocket-inspired kitchenware. I got some great reactions from the SpaceX fan community on Facebook, and it got me thinking that a gridfin waffle iron ought to be next, but that's definitely in the realm of insanity and well beyond my means. Unless someone knows of a place that'll do iron casting or can Teflon coat aluminum, but I really shouldn't let myself go down that rabbit hole. I had a lot of fun with this project creatively, and I hope the recipients of my fins get as much enjoyment out of these as I did designing them. I want to thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll be back with another CNC-related project in a week or two. By the way, if anyone wants to help me attend another rocket launch, you should go like my pinned tweet and tell NASA Social that you would totally watch a launch video if I made one. Hashtag shameless plug. <laughs>